Could this be some type of sauropod, like the Brachiosaurus? This Chinese pottery artifact looks very similar to the Hadrosaur. And this 3rd century BC ornamental box appears to have sauropod dinosaurs built onto it as handles. This 2,500 year old Chinese dragon closely resembles a creature like a Diplodocus. Central Asia with its dense rainforests and jungles is home to many stories about strange dinosaur-like monsters and the artifacts that have been found are quite revealing. The similarities that these monsters and dragons have with dinosaurs is undeniable and coupled with the modern and ancient stories of monsters that continue to be seen in the jungles leads many to believe that one day one of these rare creatures could be captured or killed. This 12th century Cambodian temple constructed in 1186 AD is home to a very interesting dinosaur artifact. The temple is covered with ornate designs and stone carvings on its exterior. This carving of a stegosaurus-like dinosaur was found on the temple wall. As late as the 1800s, the Dayak culture of Borneo was producing artwork with dinosaurs on them. This water fountain on a Hindu temple built in the 1800s looks very similar to the Triceratops. There have been several other findings like this throughout Asia, including these two 10th century AD bronze sculptures from Nepal which bear a close resemblance to several types of ceratopsid dinosaurs. European history is filled with dragon artwork, sculptures, and artifacts. These not only include the popular look of dragons seen in much of the artwork, but also include many other fascinating creatures that look very similar to dinosaurs. The Palestrina mosaic from around 100 AD has several animals depicted that appear to be extinct and prehistoric. Why would the Roman culture place prehistoric extinct creatures within their historical documents and artwork? The obvious answer is that they existed together and they recorded what they observed. Here we see a Dinohyus, which means terrible pig. The Dinohyus was supposed to have died off about 24 million years ago. And here we see several men fighting what appears to be a type of quadruped dinosaur. Found at Carlisle Cathedral, on the tomb of Bishop Richard Bell, who died in 1496, are these two brass engravings. Here are two dinosaurs depicted in a 2nd century Roman inscription. The Thracians were a group of Indo-European tribes who spoke the Thracian language and thrived from 3200 BC to 500 BC. This Thracian helmet is adorned with an ornament that looks much like a Centosaurus. Look at the ornament in comparison to skeletal remains and drawings. Many other ancient cultures throughout history have given us artwork, sculptures, and artifacts that point to the existence of dinosaurs and man together. Take a look at a few more of these amazing artifacts. This amazing cave drawing was found in Wapatki National Park, Arizona. It is thought to be around 1,000 years old. At Bridges National Monument in Utah, the Anasazi Indians made this cave drawing several thousand years ago. This ancient cylinder seal was found in Mesopotamia. In a book by A.M. Myler, written from 1725 to 1727, recounting his travels from Rome to Jerusalem, then to Troy, Egypt, Syria, and Malta, are found pictures of many things that Myler saw and drew as he traveled. This is a drawing of something seen by Myler. It appears to be some sort of flying dragon. Much more likely, it was a breed of pterosaur. Indians in the American Southwest, and also throughout Central and South America, tell stories of the Thunderbird, that by description and some archaeological evidence could be a pterosaur or pterodactyl. And Indian prayer sticks that are used to this day have the head of a pterodactyl on them. This brief video touches on only a small portion of the physical evidence for the existence of dinosaurs with man, and at the end you will be given references if you wish to investigate further. 
Now that we have looked at the history, let's take a look at the present day and examine evidence for dinosaurs that could still be alive today. If there are dinosaurs that are still alive, and they have always existed with man, this means that modern scientists have made some serious errors regarding their interpretation of geologic and paleologic data. It also spoils the strongly held belief that the dinosaurs were wiped out 65 million years ago when a comet hit the earth. So what really happened to the dinosaurs? This narrator and many millions of other learned people, young and old alike, believe the biblical story of the great flood tells their fate. The Bible says that Noah took two of every kind of animal onto the ark. If that is true, then Noah would have included young dinosaurs, which were much smaller than their older adult counterpart. The environment before the flood was very different, and this allowed both men and animals to live extremely long lives. All reptiles grow from the time they are born to the time they die, so a reptile that was 600 to 900 years old would have been an extremely large animal, a dinosaur. The younger dinosaurs would have been much smaller. It would have been logical for Noah to take younger animals for several reasons. They eat less, sleep more, produce less waste, and have a longer reproductive lifespan. All life on Earth, except for those on the Ark, perished and was buried in the sedimentary rock layers that were laid down by this worldwide catastrophic flood. The vast fossil record that we see so consistently throughout the entire world today is proof of this worldwide flood, and interestingly, there are over 500 flood legends and stories from around the world. After the flood, Noah's family and the surviving animals began to repopulate the earth. Over time, the dinosaurs, like many other creatures, were hunted to near extinction. There would have been multiple reasons why the surviving dinosaurs would have been killed off by man. They were usually described as being ferocious and a menace to people. Also, they would have been hunted for food. And finally, they would have been hunted for the honor and glory of killing a ferocious creature. So where would we find very rare and nearly extinct animals which had been nearly wiped out by man and the harsh post-flood environment? It would be logical to look in places where man has difficulty reaching. The nearly impenetrable jungles and deep vast bodies of water throughout the world would be a good place to start. One of the most common dinosaurs that we find evidence for in our time is the plesiosaur or elasmosaur, which were types of dinosaurs that lived primarily in water. It would have been much more difficult for man to hunt down this type of creature due to its ability to live almost entirely in water. Also, it is believed that these creatures, as well as many other extinct reptiles, are nocturnal like the alligator and caiman, making them even more elusive. There are many reputable stories of people seeing or having brief encounters with water-dwelling dinosaurs. Three of the most common in English-speaking countries are the Loch Ness Monster, the Lake Ogopogo Monster, and the Lake Champlain Monster. The Lake Champlain Monster, or Champ as many call this creature, is regularly seen in the waters of Lake Champlain in upstate New York. It is likely that this is not just one creature that is being sighted, but multiple creatures of the same species that live in the waters of the lake. Lake Champlain is an extremely large glacial lake that is up to 400 feet deep in places. Thousands of people, dating all the way back to the Abunaki Indians, claim to have seen this creature. The first recorded sighting took place when Samuel de Champlain came upon the lake in July 1609. During this expedition, the French explorer noted in his journal these words, a 20-foot serpent with a horse-shaped head and a body as thick as a keg. The most famous of the Champ encounters was in 1977 by a woman named Sandy Mancy and her family. She took this photo and watched the creature for more than 10 minutes. In an interview, she stated, I know that what I saw was a dinosaur. A man named Dr. James Miller from Norfolk, New York was a sergeant in the U.S. Air Force stationed at Plattsburgh Air Force Base in the summer of 1983. He and three friends were in a canoe on Lake Champlain when they saw Champ. They said, It looked like a huge serpent moving up and down, not side to side like a fish. It was more than 30 feet long. They watched the creature for over 15 minutes. Lake Okanagan, an 80-mile-long lake in the south-central interior of British Columbia, 
is home to a creature that has been named Ogopogo by the local people. Archival records of Ogopogo's existence go back to 1872 and sightings have been reported regularly up to the present. The creature is described as being 1 to 2 feet in diameter with a length of 15 to 20 feet. The head has been described as being horse or goat-like. Early inhabitants of the area, including Indians and English settlers, both had encounters with Ogopogo, and it's recorded that armed settlers patrolled the shoreline to prevent attacks from the creature. On September 16, 1947, Ogopogo was watched by some 30 cars of people along an Okanagan Mission Beach. The creature was described as having a long, sinuous body, 30 feet in length. Not many creatures like this have been sighted by such large numbers of people at the same time. On July 17, 1959, a group of people saw a tremendous creature with a snake-like head and a blunt nose swimming some 250 feet from their motorboat on Okanagan Lake. The group watched the creature for over three minutes, after which it submerged. Loch Ness, which is a lake in Scotland, is home to the Loch Ness Monster. There have been thousands of in-water and out-of-water sightings over the past several hundred years. Some of these sightings have been very close encounters. The list of reputable people who have been eyewitnesses goes into the hundreds. It includes doctors, lawyers, scientists, farmers, clergy, and many people just like you and me. These people many of which have given sworn statements to the truth of what they have said, all say that they saw a creature that is like nothing they have ever seen before, and many say that the creature closely resembles a plesiosaur. For a deeper look into the Loch Ness Dinosaur, the website www.nessie.co.uk is about the best. They have records of hundreds of eyewitness accounts and information on the continued quest to positively identify the creature. Lake Erie has been home to a number of sightings of strange, unidentified creatures. This small creature was discovered dead along the shore of Lake Erie by a taxidermist named Pete Peterson of Lakewood, Ohio. The creature was three feet long, had four flippers, a small head, and a long neck. He took the creature and mounted it. The creature appears to be an infant plesiosaur. In 1925, this creature washed up on the coast of California. E. L. Wallace, president of the Natural History Society of British Columbia said, My examination of the monster was quite thorough. It had no teeth, its head is large, and its neck full 20 feet long. I would call it a type of plesiosaur. Another witness, Judge W. R. Springer of Santa Cruz, felt the creature was from a prehistoric age. He added his observation evidence of two short feet or flippers and probably swam with its head high above the water. During the 1930s and 40s such creatures were spotted many times by fishermen of Monterey's sardine fleet with one account stating that it was witnessed by one boat's entire crew of 12 men. There have been thousands of confirmed sightings of very large long-necked serpent-like creatures from the United States Canada, Scotland, Russia, Norway, English Channel, Brazil, Japan, China, and Sweden. Several unidentified dead creatures of similar description have also been found. Skeptics make excuses for such sightings, but the evidence still remains. The sheer number and also the valid testimonies of people of reputable character make these sightings hard to deny. Found in the deep jungles of the African Congo is the largest swamp in the world. The Laikawala Swamp is 55,000 square miles in size. This should give you an idea of just how big the swamp is. The swamp is 80% unexplored. Very few civilized people venture into this swamp because of the harsh conditions. But tribespeople living around the swamp say that there are several creatures that live there that are apparently living dinosaurs. When they are shown pictures of different dinosaurs, they identify without hesitation the hepatosaur and the triceratops as creatures that they have observed in the swamp. The hepatosaur